At the dawn of the atomic age of flight, just a year from the shadows of World War II, the Republic F-84 Thunderjet carved its path through the heavens, eclipsing the legendary speeds of the P-51 Mustang by nearly 200 miles per hour. As the first jet warplane to roll off the American production lines in mass, it stood on the brink of revolutionizing the skies. With its sleek lines and straight wings, the F-84 soared with a singular purpose – to redefine the rules of aerial engagement. Abandoning traditional pistons for the raw power of an Allison J-35A-13C turbojet, it shattered the national speed record, thundering through the atmosphere at a groundbreaking 607.2 miles per hour. Yet the Thunderjet was more than a mere speed demon. It was a symbol of a new, terrifying chapter in military strategy. As the inaugural fighter bomber capable of wielding a nuclear weapon, it marked the onset of a fearsome chapter in global warfare. But the journey of this pioneering aircraft, plagued by a litany of mechanical malfunctions and daunting maintenance challenges, it earned the notorious title of Mechanic's Nightmare. As the clouds of the Korean War gathered on the horizon, the F-84 Thunderjet was poised to demonstrate its true metal, proving that its legacy was not to be defined by early tribulations. As World War II was nearing its climax, Republic Aviation recognized that their 1941 creation, the P-47 Thunderbolt, was on the fast track to obsolescence, overshadowed by the rapid advancements in fighter aircraft design. Jet engine technology appeared to be the future of combat aviation. On September 11, 1944, the U.S. Army Air Forces laid out the blueprint for a day fighter that would redefine aerial combat, a bird with a top speed of 600 miles per hour, a combat radius of 850 miles, and packed to the gills with firepower, either eight 12.7 mm or six 15.2 mm cannons. These ambitious specs were later dialed back to a more manageable combat radius of 705 miles and a lighter armament loadout. Banking on Republic's solid track record, the military brass didn't bother shopping around for other manufacturers. Staring down the barrel of the limitations of their piston engine steeds, Republic Aviation saddled up for the challenge of berthing a turbojet-powered successor to the P-47. This was the wild west of jet fighter design, where the tech was green and unproven. Nobody had yet engineered a safe, reliable, and battle-ready jet. Each outfit was left to cut its own path through uncharted territory. Amid this storm of innovation, the Thunderjet was born, flying high with other trailblazers like the P-80 Shooting Star and the North American F-86 Sabre. The P-80 Shooting Star heralded the dawn of the jet age for American aviation, clinching the title of the first American jet fighter. However, the F-84 Thunderjet and the F-86 Sabre truly honed the jet fighter concept, pushing the envelope in range, payload, and operational flexibility. The journey began with the Thunderjet's first prototype wrapping up in December 1945. Yet her maiden flight was pushed to February 1946 due to delays in securing engines. Wind tunnel experiments exposed a critical flaw in the design of the vertical stabilizer at high speeds, alongside worries about the aircraft's heft. By August 1946, a second prototype took to the skies. The following month, she smashed a national speed record, blazing past at 607.2 miles per hour and highlighting the XP-84's sheer muscle. Yet Republic Aviation wasn't just gunning to shatter the national speed record. They were hot on the heels of the international speed champ, the British Gloucester Meteor. This jet, the first Allied fighter to roar through the skies of World War II, had recently clocked a blistering 616 miles per hour, despite its older design compared to the Thunderjet. Despite these bumps in the road, the assembly line shifted into overdrive in 1947, with the first squadron of F-84Bs thundering into action by December of that year. The Thunderjet was distinguished by its innovative design features. The nose air intake was at the heart of its aerodynamic profile, a brilliant decision that ensured a smooth airflow to the engine. 
The straight wing setup decked out with wingtip tanks was the gold standard for early jet fighters, offering stability and extra mileage. The pilot's cockpit cover, starting off as a slick sliding feature, got a tweak with support struts to boost safety for the pilot without messing with the Thunder Jet's sharp outline. A tandem landing gear layout gave her the balance and support needed for her sturdy build and hefty weaponry. Packing serious heat, the F-84 was kitted out with six 50 caliber M3 Browning machine guns, a powerhouse lineup that could lay down a rain of bullets. As her mission profile broadened, clever additions like pylons under each wing and the belly meant the Thunderjet could lug around up to 32 rockets or 4,000 pounds of bombs, proving her adaptability in the heat of battle. In her pivotal role at the dawn of the nuclear era, she was strategically prepared to execute the deployment of the Mark VII nuclear bomb, colloquially known as Thor. This American tactical nuclear weapon, designed for deployment by smaller aircraft, tipped the scales at 1,700 pounds, holding significant destructive potential despite its relatively compact size. The heart of this formidable fighter was powered by the Allison J35A29 turbojet engine, a marvel of engineering that represented a significant advancement for the Air Force into the realm of axial flow compressor jet technology. This innovative approach involves compressing air to increase its density before it is combined with fuel to propel the aircraft. The air is directed straight through the engine, where it is compressed by a series of rotating blades akin to fans and stationary blades. This compression process not only densifies the air, but also prepares it for efficient combustion. Marking a considerable leap forward from previous piston-powered engines, this technology enables aircraft to achieve higher speeds and improved fuel efficiency. With her 11-stage axial flow compressor and a single-stage turbine, the J-35 was the picture of simplicity and get-up-and-go efficiency. Slapping on an afterburner flipped the script, catapulting the F-84 into the history book's turbojet flight by cranking her power up to a jaw-dropping 5,600 pounds of thrust, more than double that of the Messerschmitt Me-262, the first operational combat jet in the world. This mix of top-shelf propulsion and heavy-duty firepower locked in the F-84 Thunderjet's legacy as a do-it-all sky warrior, acing both dogfights and hitting targets on the ground while reserving the ability to rain nuclear destruction over her enemies if necessary. At least that's what she pledged on paper. On the field, it was a different story. In December 1947, the inaugural squadron of F-84B Thunderjets was deployed to the 14th Fighter Group at Dow Field, Maine. It didn't take long for the excitement to hit a snag. Pilots were quickly slapped with limits on their throttle, capping speeds at Mach 0.8 and pulling no more than 5.5 Gs due to alarming issues with the aircraft's skin wrinkling under stress. The maintenance woes of the F-84B soon spiraled, dubbing her the mechanic's nightmare. These persistent headaches forced the entire fleet of F-84Bs to be grounded. Hopes were pinned on the upcoming F-84C to iron out these kinks. But history repeated itself and the new variant faced a similar fate, leading to another round of groundings. Salvation came with the rollout of the F-84D, which addressed and rectified the flaws of the previous models. This variant swiftly asserted her dominance over the Air Force's other jet fighter, the Lockheed F-80 Shooting Star, showcasing marked improvements. Efforts were made to retrofit the F-84Bs and F-84Cs, patching them up for service until their eventual retirement in 1952. The F-84D also bowed out from the Air Force in the same year, but continued to serve with the Air National Guard until 1957, marking the end of an era but leaving a legacy of resilience and innovation. The dawn of the 1950s brought with it the F-84E, a model that represented a significant leap forward from her predecessors, marking her status as the first truly effective iteration of the Thunderjet series. This model boasted a suite of enhancements, cutting-edge avionics, 
an elongated fuselage for improved aerodynamics, reinforced wings, and the addition of pylons for carrying extra fuel tanks and retractable mounts for rockets under each wing, dramatically boosting her firepower and endurance. Yet the F-84E's potential was clipped by logistical headaches, with parts shortages grounding about half of the fleet at any given time. This operational hiccup led to her phased retirement from the Air Force by 1956, with the reserve following a year later. Nevertheless, the FA-4E soldiered on with the Air National Guard until 1959, demonstrating her resilience and adaptability. 1951 saw the arrival of the F-84G, stepping up the game with in-flight refueling capabilities, a beefed-up engine, and an enhanced payload capacity. Despite these advancements, the F-84G was essentially a placeholder, bridging the gap until the swept-wing F-84F Thunderstreak could take the stage. The Air Force welcomed 789 units of the F-84G, while its international footprint expanded with over 2,000 units finding homes abroad. The F-84G's tenure in the U.S. service stretched until 1964, showcasing great durability and versatility on the global stage. With most shortcomings addressed or diminished, the Thunderjet would have her chance to shine during the fierce aerial clashes of the Korean War. When the United States decided to jump into the fray of the Korean War, it was all hands on deck to deploy a wing of F-84 Thunderjets overseas. By the time 1950 was wrapping up, these powerhouse jets touched down, kicking off their first missions in December, primarily playing the role of wingmen for the B-29 Super Fortress bombers cruising through enemy skies. The Thunderjet scored her first air-to-air -air victory on January 21, 1951, but this win came at a hefty cost, losing two fighter bombers to enemy fire. In the high-stakes dogfight over Korea, the F-84 was outclassed by the Soviet Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-15. This swept-wing rival outpaced and outmaneuvered it. This underdog role led to a game-changing switch. The F-86 Sabre stepped up to the plate for air superiority missions, leaving the F-84 to strafe enemy troops as a ground-attack aircraft. This strategic pivot turned the Thunderjet from a struggling escort fighter into a powerhouse of ground-attack might. This new role didn't just salvage her reputation, it catapulted the F-84 into becoming an indispensable asset in the Korean theater, fundamentally altering the dynamics of air-to-ground combat in the conflict. By the time the dust settled on the Korean War, the F-84 Thunderjet had carved out a legendary spot in the history books of military aviation with some impressive stats. Over 86,000 combat sorties flown, over 55,000 tons of bombs dropped, over 6,000 tons of napalm unleashed, and over 22,000 rockets fired. The Thunderjet was a force of nature on the battlefield, knocking out 60% of all air-to-ground targets and snagging eight air-to-air -air wins against the tough Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-15s. The Air Force counted the loss of 305 F-84s during the war, with 249 of those losses attributed to combat. But even with these tough breaks, the Thunderjet's mark on air combat is undeniable. But it wasn't just about the fight. The F-84 Thunderjet also led the charge in aerial refueling and takeoff tech. She became the first jet to ace air-to-air -air refueling in combat operations. This development took place during the Korean War when F-84 fighters were refueled by modified B-29 bombers. This operation significantly extended the range and endurance of the F-84s, enabling them to carry out longer missions. The F-84G model, in particular, was equipped with a refueling receptacle in the leading edge of the left wing, compatible with the boom-equipped KB-29P, marking a significant advancement in the operational capabilities of fighter aircraft. In 1955, an F-84E powered by a solid-fuel booster rocket made the first zero-length takeoff. This bold move allowed the fighter bomber to launch from just about anywhere, even a trailer, proving the Thunderjet's versatility and reliability. 
As the F-84 Thunderjet stepped back from the front lines, she didn't just slip quietly into the shadows, she vaulted into the heart of American cultural lore, capturing the essence of innovation and bravery. Her storied battle achievements aside, the Thunderjet also morphed into an icon of aerial elegance and pinpoint accuracy stealing the hearts of a whole generation. On May 25, 1953, the heavens bore witness to the birth of the 3,600th Air Demonstration Team, charged with wowing the crowd, buffing up the Air Force's rep, and showcasing the might of their birds and the slick moves of their pilots. The F-84G Thunderjet was chosen for this prestigious role, becoming the first aircraft to grace the skies with the Thunderbirds the Air Force's elite demonstration team from 1953 to 1955.